Hey guys, I recently changed jobs, which means I won't be using a Dell laptop anymore. I'm still a programmer though, so I also needed a decent computer. I now work at Mantle, a startup in Montreal that offers the blockchain technology as a service, and my new employer offered me to pick the computer I wanted within a budget, so I decided to go with a custom build. I like to use a laptop at work for the portability factor, but I was tired of the performance letdowns I've had with my previous laptop, so that's what drove me to go with a desktop PC instead of a laptop. But enough talking, let's start with the parts list. So here's a look at all the parts we ordered for it. This build is mostly meant for web development, so I didn't need a powerful GPU, instead I mostly focused on the CPU power. And that's why I went with an i7-8700. This CPU features 6 cores and 12 threads with a base clock of 3.2 GHz while still keeping a 65 watt TDP. I could have went with a 2nd gen Ryzen 2 but the lack of compatible mini ITX motherboards at the time I ordered kept me from going with it. I didn't have a previous gen Ryzen CPU either to update the BIOS of a B350 board. Still, an overall great CPU with plenty of power, and I want my PC to be stable and silent, and that's partly why I went with a non-case CPU. To keep it cool, I went with a good old Corsair H60. That CPU cooler's design is from 2013, but it still does the job fine. While the newer 2018 version looks better with the ring LED light, the older one was much cheaper here in Canada and the performance difference is probably not that impressive, so we went with this one instead. I also went with the ASUS H370i motherboard and that board is quite amazing. It features two M.2 slots for fast PCI storage in a RAID config. It also had RGB LEDs under and an LED strip header that supports Aura Sync. And the IO shield is built in which looks gorgeous. And I think the whole board looks great with that black and silver theme. As for the PSU, my case required an SFX size power supply, so I went with the Corsair SF450. It's a fully modular 450 watt PSU and it will be plenty enough for the low power parts I went with. And I have the 60 watt version in my personal rig and I love it, so I went with it again in that build. As for the RAM, I went with 16 gigs of DDR4 memory at 3000 MHz. These sticks are from Team Group, not a brand that I know that much, but it was really cheap at the time of ordering, and its LEDs support Aura Sync, so it was a great match with my motherboard. With a non case CPU and H motherboard chipset, this kit will be limited to 2666 MHz, though. As for storage, I wanted something fast. I went with two 256GB M.2 SSDs from Intel. These are the 760p and their PCIe X4 SSDs, which means insane speeds. They can read at up to 3200 megabytes per second and write at around 1300. All of that is pretty impressive, but my goal was to run them in the RAID 0 for even better speeds. I also love the fact that they don't need additional SATA and power cables like regular SSDs, making it easier for cable management. I didn't choose my GPU, and this was a last minute pick by the person who ordered my parts, so I was provided with this Zotac 1050Ti card. I won't game on this rig, so this card is really good enough, in fact, that's only meant to drive the two 4K displays I will use, as the motherboard didn't have the proper video outputs for that. It's pretty decent overall and I like the fact that it requires no external power, again, helping with cable management. If I were to pick though, I would have been with a card that has a beefier cooler since my case has the room for it, and Aura Sync compatibility, so probably an ASUS card. And finally, I went with the Fantex Evolve Shift case. That thing looks amazing, and I love its small footprint on a desk. I think it's a killer value for the price it sold at, and the build quality is outstanding. And those tempered glass side panels look so good, and it only fits mini ITX motherboards and SFX power supplies, so that explains some of my previous part choices. So now, let's start with the build. I went ahead and installed the RAM sticks in the ASUS motherboard. 
Pretty straightforward, nothing special here. Then I installed the first M.2 SSD at the front of the board. To do so, I had to remove the heatsink first and I added a screw to keep the drive in place. I reinstalled the heatsink on top just after that. The other M.2 slot is at the back and doesn't have any heatsink. However, I needed to install a little standoff so that the M.2 drive could sit straight. Then I installed the second M.2 SSD like I did at the front. It was time to install the CPU, so I opened the locking mechanism and dropped the CPU in. I kept the protective plate in the whole time as it's meant to pop out when you lock the CPU in place. I then added the mounting brackets and screws for the H60 cooler. The motherboard will have its IO shield facing up in the Fantex case, so the goal here was to make sure that the Corsair logo wouldn't be at a 90 degree angle in the final build. This cooler also features pre-applied thermal paste, so no need to put some on the CPU first. So I added the cooler on top of the CPU and screwed it in one twist at a time to make sure it was level. I checked from time to time with my phone's flashlight while doing it to make sure I wasn't setting the pump on the capacitors. It all seemed fine and here's a look at the final result. So I started to remove the case's side panels as I was ready to install the motherboard in. There was also a few boxes in the case with hardware or other stuff like that that I had to remove at the same time. I tried to fit the motherboard, but since its IO shield is fixed and it's a bit bulky, I wasn't able to fit it in. The front fan was in the way. So I removed that problematic front fan first and then I was able to install the motherboard in with ease. I also secured it with the four corner screws. Fortunately, I was able to reinstall that fan later. I then connected the PCI extension for the GPU and the USB 3 cable for the case's built-in USB ports in my motherboard. I was then able to attach the radiator and its fan to the bottom of the case. That was not necessarily an easy task as the space to work in is quite limited and there are multiple mounting points to where you can mount it. These are nice though as the rod can easily prevent the side panels from closing depending on how it's mounted. I was also able to reinstall the front fan after the motherboard was secured in. That's great as I was a bit scared that it wouldn't fit anymore. But it was only in the way when installing the motherboard, not after that. So I was ready to install the PSU. This Fantex case only fits SFX units and this Corsair one fits there with no problem. The fact that it's fully modular helps a lot too. Unfortunately, it wasn't easy to install as my radiator was in the way and I had to unscrew it first to secure the PSU in. Once the power supply was in place, I was able to reinstall the radiator, but I had to change its orientation so that it fits with the PSU. I also had to fiddle with it when I reinstalled the side panels, as one of them didn't fully close because of it. It was time to install the GPU. This guy will go behind the motherboard with the help of a PCI extension cable. The rack that allows that can be installed both ways, which means you can have the fans facing the motherboard or the side panel. Weirdly enough, it was installed so that the GPU's heatsink would face the center of the case, which I think doesn't look great and wouldn't be ideal for thermal, so I switch it around. So this is the small 1050 Ti that I would install. It's really small. I installed it in the rack like you can see, but I had to remove it a few days later as I was not able to secure the PCI bracket with a screw that way. The card was wobbling a bit and it wasn't ideal at all, so keep in mind that if you remove that GPU rack, you might as well secure the GPU in it while you're at it, instead of installing the GPU after reinstalling the rack. So I finished with the PSU cables. I needed to install the 24-pin motherboard connector as well as the two 4-pin connectors for the CPU. There was also a SATA power connector required by the case for the LED light on top. I added it first, but since that was only needed for that small light, I removed it in the end to reduce the clutter in my case. And I don't think that little light was worth the added clutter as I don't even see it when I'm sitting. It could also power additional LED strips, but I don't have any at the moment and if I do someday I might as well just plug them in my ASUS motherboard for that AuraSync support. 
So in the end, that would result in only two cables needed for the whole rig, since the GPU doesn't need a 6-pin power connector, and all my storage is M.2, which means these drives also use power from the motherboard. I finalized the build with some steps that I didn't film, so I did some cable management, I also added an arctic fan that I had laying around, and I added the screw to secure the GPU like I said earlier, so here's the final result. If you ask me, it's a really clean looking PC. This fanfix case is gorgeous, and the RGB LEDs add a little touch of color in that neutral theme. I like that all the parts are either black, silver, or a mix of both. The only thing I don't like about it is how all the cables come out of the top of the case. They're a lot more visible like this than if they came out of the bottom. There could have been some sort of channel in the case to route the cables downward and have them come out close to where the AC connector is. And that case is kind of hard to build in too. My personal rig features a DAN case, which is a much smaller case, but it's a lot easier to work with. With the Evolve Shift, I had to remove some of the parts I had already installed multiple times because it wouldn't fit otherwise. Again, I haven't followed the instructions either. But speaking of the DAN case, I also received all the parts to upgrade it. It will also feature a RAID 0 M.2 SSD array and other cool components. So make sure you subscribe if you don't want to miss the video I will make about that build update. But going back to the Fantex build, that thing looks amazing and it works really great and I'm sure it will be perfect for the work I do. My initial concerns were the 16 gigs of RAM that would maybe not be enough in some scenarios, but in my full workload, I still have 6 gigs left, so I think I'm good. As for overall speed, that thing is pretty amazing. From that 6 core i7 to the fast RAM and M.2 RAID array, there's not a part in there that seems to be a bottleneck for now. Sure, if it was used for gaming, I would need to upgrade the GPU, but when used to drive two 4K displays in a productivity scenario, it's plenty good. And I will have all the parts I used in this build listed down below if you'd like to check out the exact parts I used for this build. So hope you guys enjoyed this video, make sure you hit the like button if you did and don't forget to subscribe if you still haven't already as I'll see you in the next video.